So any uh, interesting uh, challenges for slattery so, uh, for the rest of the season? That's a good question. What are the interesting challenges for Slattery coming up? Slattery's going to be put in a position a little bit unfamiliar to him where he has to take the rein of the ship while the captain is off doing other things and that would be uh, psychologically and emotionally challenging and have some moral quandaries. And, uh, yeah, yeah. He's already done it in Guantanamo for a little bit. Yep. And he was on the away mission. Yep. It's, 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 it's in a much it, higher it, stage. It definitely does break protocol to let the captain go off the ship. Uh, a bit, a bit, but you know, we have to let we have to let our our captain Eric Dane kick he's ass. He's got to go those, kick ass. So he's got those guns. yeah, I mean, what kind of TV show do you have? If you don't have the captain going off and kicking ass. Come on. So there's a little. We take some liberties with Navy protocol, but it's apocalyptic. What do you think? Well, that's the thing is that their typical Navy ship is not equipped with a ton of people who are actually trained to go off the ship and do extra missions. You know, they have a small VBSS team, that's what it's called, um, and, and now in these situations they're getting off and it's not enough to have six or eight guys. Um, and Chandler has the background um, that he's done that job before, so he says, yes, yes, I'm the captain, it's not a great idea for me to leave the ship under normal circumstances. I have an incredibly capable and, you know, smart, terrific, Leader. terrific uh, XO who I know can run the ship, and I'm not going to ask some 22-year-old who's never been trained to do this to go out and to do some dangerous thing. I'm going to go and I'm going to lead the second team. So, and that, I mean, I think it, it does actually make sense given the, you know, very, very unconventional scenario that the characters find themselves. Plus, if we've learned nothing from Star Trek, the captain always leaves the ship. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, thank I'm, God, I'm, thank God, <laughs> thank God, we don't have any red shirts in our wardrobe, <laughs> right? Exactly. It, it that certainly makes it more fun than you know, sitting around in the chair, right. wa watching it through the uh, you know through, through a helmet cam. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. This, this ship is involved in some highly technical stuff. You guys have to bring yourself up to speed on Navy jargon and the tech stuff. There, well, to a certain degree, yes. Obviously, we have to speed it up a bit, and we have to rely on our writers and our technical advisors to give us things that are. A, technically accurate, and B, not too much of a mouthful that you can, you can recite for the storyline. Um, taking some tours of the ship, but these guys, they trained for years and years and years to learn these things. And, uh, we have military consultants that we work on when we're crafting the scripts. And, you know, we don't know the terminology, so we sort of write a sort of ballpark idea of what we want the action to be. And then, We'll give the scripts to our Navy consultants and they'll come back and say, here's how you would say this. And if it doesn't sound cool enough or it sounds too confusing, um, we'll say, hey, is there another way of saying that? Is there another way of saying that? And generally, we'll, we will get the three, four, five options for how to say any particular given order. And we'll just pick the one that sounds the coolest and also in some way accessible to the audience. It's very humbling to be in and amongst these professionals. Very humbling. So how do you guys, how do you account for, there are so many shows now that are dealing in one way or another with viruses that are, you know, not, not computer viruses, but maybe, but, but viruses that could create a world like you're seeing in the last ship where it's either near apocalyptic or post apocalyptic. And, and your show is unique because it's, it's on a ship and it's on a whole different take on it. But there's a ton of shows all of a sudden that are, is it touching into some, into some sort of angst that we all have? I think that there's something going on in the ether where A, you have had a handful of viruses in the last 10 years, swine flu and more bird flu, and people have been scared about that, and there's a sense that Mother Nature is always a very scary opponent, you know, in terms of storytelling, and this is, it's in the news, so it's in the zeitgeist, and I think that the interesting situation that it sets up is we also have a, 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 a society where technology is becoming more and more and more powerful, right? So if you have this incredible, horrible uh, uh, antagonist to the virus, the flip side is that we have feel like human beings have technological prowess to potentially be able to combat 
and that's the essence of our show, right? Is that we have the most powerful virus ever to hit mankind, but somehow maybe with human ingenuity and smarts and technology that we can come up with something to actually to, to defeat it. So I think that's kind of what uh, makes it feel very up and down. In your superhero alter ego, are you a cape or no cape? <laughs> Ooh, no cape. No cape. No cape. No cape. Minimal flair. <laughs> Minimal flair. I like it. Now, are the Russians going to be uh, like, a, like a pesky threat pretty much all season? Not at all. We won't give away the the final results, but I, they will return and will return in a big way. And, uh, Kirk needs his con, and you know, we, you know well, common, have sen common sense would dictate that the powers that be still have some remnants of power. Wrap you know, it up, wrap it up. Really? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to wrap it up. Here. So the answer is yes. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.